Hey guys, this is Vinny from FuelTech USA and today in this video we're gonna talk a little bit about wastegate boost control on your PowerFT ECU. So if you have a FuelTech FT450, FT550 or FT600, you can use the wastegate boost control to control the pressure that you're using on the motor. So remember, the wastegate boost control works based on the pressure on the wastegate. So the map reading is gonna be slightly different, usually it's a little bit below because you have the back pressure and other factors on the motor. So remember, when you're doing with this feature, you were talking always about the wastegate pressure. There are also two different ways of doing the control on the wastegate. You can use a CO2 bottle with like a pressure going through the solenoids. So you're gonna have two different solenoids, one for increase, another one for decrease. And also you can use uh, the manifold pressure going to the wastegate. However, then you need to use a three-way valve or a four-way valve, but not the increase or decrease solenoid. The next step, I'm gonna show you guys how to go through the software, setting your outputs, inputs, and also the wastegate boost control feature, and we can get this thing going. All right, now that we're on FT Manager software, we can go uh, to map options, and we, can we have to select wastegate boost control uh, on this case, we have two boost controller options. We have the number one, number two. Uh, they work exactly the same. Uh, that's mostly used for a compound setup. But um, for this video only, we're gonna use just um, wastegate boost control. So I can click on top of the name and you'll send me straight to the menu. On the menu itself, uh, we have different kind of uh, control types. Uh, the most common for drag racing is time-based after validated launch. Uh, we also have gear and engine RPM, gear and lapse time, single target value, that's more like a, if you're just trying to make it simple, um, engine RPM and reference speed. So if you're choosing for uh, time-based after validated launch, you're going to have your targets for two-step, three-step, uh, burnout, and also the pre-launch target. That means if you're not under any of these previous conditions, we're going to sit at this number here. If you have a scramble button and you can enable some extra boost or it will raise the target so you can have more boost on the wastegate. Uh, you can just put the number you want here and we have to select uh, the input for the scramble button later. Control gains basically how fast the control will try to reach the target. It can go from like a one which is like pretty slow and smooth or it can go up to 25 uh, that will be the highest number. You will be like, try to get the target as soon as you can. So it will be faster. However, it might be a little unstable for some sort of uh, application. There are a lot of factors that play along with the control gain. So it depends how long the lines are. It depends how big is the wastegate itself, how big is the actuator. So if it's the injectors, if it's just uh, the dual valve block, or if the pressure is coming from CO2 bottle or intake. So this number will have to be adjusted for each case. Uh, I'd say a good number to get started from is like 15. So it's kind of mid of the range. And then you see if uh, it's too spicy, it's too like unstable, you can go down the number or if it's too slow, you should go up on the number. Moving to the settings, uh, as we mentioned before, there are two options to make the control work. It's CO2 bottle based or the intake manifold pressure. Uh, intake manifold pr pressure will allow you to do dual 2 valve uh, or single 3 valve. So uh, you, you, this is the most common setup for um, intake manifold pressure is usually just a single 3 valve, but you can also use the dual valve. If you're running CO2 bottle, only the dual valve will be compatible because if not, you will be bleeding the CO2 out of the bottle and uh, unnecessary and will be run out of CO2 real quick. Uh, using the CO2 bottle, you also have to make sure what's the pressure that you have in the bottle so you can configure on the software. This will play a little bit with the, with the control gain as well. So it's a very important thing to have the right numbers over here. For the valve model, we can use high flow injectors um, using our, one of the brackets that we sell on the website or low flow injectors. Uh, the most common is the FT dual block valve, which is the solenoid that we have on the video over here. It's just a block in and out from, um, for pressure and also um, just leak out outside if uh, it's not controlling the, the pressure at that time or just to release the, the pressure from the wastegate. 
And another option for whoever is using FuelTech for a long time now is the Boost, Boost Controller 2 valves. So I will leave it as FT dual valve block. Uh, there are a few options to trigger on and off the system. So you can activate the control only when the TPS is over a certain number. You can put here. Um, this will prevent work when you just like power up the car and you're not running. So the, the CO2 valves are not going to be clicking trying to get the target. So this is a good one to keep enabled. Also, you can correlate to the map so you can only have the, the control working when the map is over this number over here. You can turn on and off. Um, a good option is to, to turn like either one of these on, but not both, uh, to make it simple and easier to test. The maximum map boost over here is a safety feature. So if you don't want to run more than this boost on the intake, you can put the number here and the control as soon as it gets to that number, it will target zero again. So it will dump the valve, it will dump the air that's going through the wastegate and you're gonna have, uh, it's gonna decrease the boost that you have on the intake. Same thing applies for the two step maximum boost. It's just a safety feature when it reaches this number, you open the gate and it's gonna release the pressure. Proportional output, it's um, an option that we can use just to make um, a, a interpolation between zero and the TPS that you want it to achieve. Uh, usually we leave this option disabled so there's nothing to mess up with your targets. It's either you're trying to reach the target, that's all it will take. And, and you don't have any other kind of like interpolations in between. You can also select how the output's gonna be activated. If it's uh, zero volts or if it's 12 volts, if you're using um, 12 volts, you have to have a yellow output commanding the, the solenoid. Uh, you can also select how the scram bot will be activated if it's a zero volts or 12 volts. Usually the most common application is zero volts. And going to the left column over here, now we have now we have like um, the overall trim. So if you wanna so if you wanna add more pressure on top of the whole curve here, you can you can just type the number you want. So let's say you wanna add five pounds of boost all over the place, it's just gonna add uh, this amount or so it's easier to keep at zero so you can see all the numbers that you have on the target itself. So this is the target table based on two step uh, release. So after you let go from the bottom, the time is gonna start count and the targets will go through these curves that you have over here. So it's pretty easy to manipulate, just go up and down the, on the keyboard and also you can just press the space bar and just type in the number that you want. If you have a different kind of control, so I'm gonna change just to gear and RPM just to show you guys. You have different um, gear options over here. So you change by gear or by speed. It depends what you have select on this menu over here. Now we're gonna go to the inputs menu so you can configure the wastegate pressure sensor and the scram button. So we're gonna select uh, input number 15. We're gonna come over here on default name and we're gonna search for wastegate pressure so if you're using the wastegate uh, boost control number one, you're gonna select number one. If you're using number two, select just number two. We're going with number one, okay. And then you go here and select what sensor you're using. So the most common sensor is the PS150 that we sell on the website as well. It's a zero to 150 PSI sensor. It's, it reads from 0.5 volts to 4.5 volts. Uh, you can also have option to make it custom and you can uh, put the numbers you want according to your sensor. So make sure you have the right numbers over here. Very important for the feature to work well. If you have a, a scram button and you want to select, you want to enable it, just come over here, enable the input, and you're gonna select boost plus scram button for boost control number one or two if you're using. Um, and then you can just hit okay. And again, this setting here is gonna follow wherever you have set on the previous menu. Uh, if it's uh, activated by ground or 12 volts, make sure you got this, this thing correct as well. Next step, we're going to the output menu, still under sensors and calibration. I'm gonna come over here to the bottom. And now we're gonna select which output you're using to run your solenoids. So again, we're gonna have two options. Uh, if say, let's say you're using um, the CO2 bottle where you have increase and decrease solenoid. Uh, I'm gonna select a yellow output, but you can use uh, either blues or grays. It depends on the kind of the valve that you have and how you wired uh, the, the solenoid. 
So I'm gonna select over here, yellow output number three. I'm gonna search for a uh, waste gate. So here, if you're using the increase and decrease valve, we're gonna select increase, make sure you got to the right number for number one or number two. Once it's selected, you go, let's say yellow output number four for waste gate decrease. We're gonna select decrease just uh, for the number one. And this way, the CO2 bottle setup, it's complete. You got the inputs, the outputs, and also the, the right settings for the menu. Let's say now that you're using uh, intake manifold pressure, so you're not gonna use anything here. And instead of increase, we're gonna use, we're gonna use wastegate three-way. So this way you can um, use just one valve and it's gonna control boost up and down. However, uh, it's not uh, possible to use it with the CO2 bottle. So this will be the setup for uh, whoever is using the intake manifold pressure on this case. And this should be everything you need to know about setting up the boost controller or your, on your Power FT ECU. Now that everything's set up, um, if you're doing like a log or you have a log or you make a pool or something, you can always check on the data logger software uh, what's going on with the wastegate boost controller. So you have on the group one, usually you have the, the pressure and you have the target. And if you go down on the log, group eight usually has the wastegate increase and also the wastegate decrease. So you can see what both solenoids are doing for the wastegate pressure be exactly the same as the target. So here it will be all uh, the diagnostics that you need for the feature. And along with the settings on the FT manager software, you can get this thing dialed in pretty good. All right, guys, that's how pretty much you set up all the boost controller on your FuelTech Power FT ECU. So no matter if you have like a fuel injection car or a carburetor, if you're using the FuelTech just as a boost controller, that's a good option as well. Uh, this is how you set up everything. So make sure you got your, your setup good on your car and you're ready to go to the track. Just uh, if you have any questions, get in contact with tech support and we'll be here to help you guys out. So I'll see you guys next time on the next video.